Anyway, Borderlands 2, that is a very fun game. I knew that already, that it was just such a great game, but... Man, finally having it for my own is just so awesome after all this time. We're basically screwing around that game right now. Well, like, we played the shit out of that game. Just having fun with it. And the other Xbox game I got, which I haven't had a chance to try out yet, believe it or not, is Bioshock Infinite. Which I have never seen a full playthrough of, honestly. Like, I was watching a bit of Seamus's. I think I got three episodes in before I was like, eh, kinda done with this. Not because the game looked boring, but I just had too much shit, like, open. And then by the time I came back ready to watch it, I, I, he had already gone too far in the playthrough for me to, like, really try and rewatch it all. Uh, let's hit that switch for a second. This all statue is trying to say something, but you can't understand it because it has no beak. Anyway, uh, here introduces the uh, switch mechanics. Whenever you hit it, it's basically going to move those blocks up or down, depending. Now, you may want to think, well, why don't I just hit it so it's down? Because there's other parts in the dungeon where the blocks will be up, and that guy got glitched. Like, for example, look at that. But you could just do this. Click. Look at that. Very easy. That guy was a... Uh... I don't know what those guys are called. Got another key. Man, I'm raking up the keys in this dungeon already. That was weird. Yeah, that's another cool thing. This is a different mechanic you're probably going to have to figure out for later. You can actually stay on the switches as long as you hit them. So keep that in mind. That's going to come in very much handy later on. Ooh, look at this. Uh, there's going to uh, be a couple items like this where it's just a flying bag of some sort, but there's also like flying hearts at times and flying bombs. If you see those, I recommend you grab them because if they're flying like that, they usually give more than what they usually give. Like for example, if you pick up a heart, it gives you one heart. If you pick up one of those, it gives you like three or more. So they're very useful items. Um, I'm gonna hit the switch. Oh, look at that. Another key, Jesus. Like, I know the next place is called the Key Dungeon, but this is not the Key Dungeon yet. Alright, let's hop over here. Gotcha. Okay. And with that, I can just hop down. And voila! Oh, this is the Shy Guy enemies. Uh, basically, the way these guys work, you can poke them, but from the front, it's not going to do anything. So what you have to do is get behind them. They mirror all your movements, so you just have to get behind them somehow, and spin attack, or just attack somehow, you know how. I can actually not get that key right now. Damn. Well, that's a shame. Let's just keep heading this way. I mean, I might as well keep heading this way and figure out how to get, like, all the keys first before I start going inside rooms. But I think I'm just going to go inside that door so I keep the momentum, yeah, the momentum going. What do we got in here? We got a couple of keys, and also this electric guy who I hate. And I believe I've already mentioned before that I hate. Thank God he dodged me. Um, wow, this looks pretty heavy. You won't be able to lift it with your bare hands. Alright, so for this puzzle, we're going to want to push these blocks in the middle. Very simple puzzle. I mean, it's pretty obvious what you have to do. And by doing that, staircase opens, a la original Zelda style. Woohoo! What do we got down here? Man, I can kind of see where that Guardian Acorn thing is getting a little annoying, but... Honestly, it's still not bad enough to warrant not using them. I mean, they're so useful. Jeez. That's like saying you're not going to use friggin' I don't know how to describe that. I'm trying to think of someone who's really annoying but really useful. Hmm. Do we know anyone like that? Who's really annoying but really useful? Uh, Like a character you want to hate but you can't hate him because he's good. Oh, god damn it, it's this guy. Say hello to the boss of this dungeon. He is kind of annoying. Because he throws you. And throws bombs. For as long as you spin attack a couple times, he goes down relatively easy. Try not to get hit by him, especially throw him, because that does a lot of damage. But, there we go. See? Already done. What, that? what do we get? Fairy. Alright. Now let's finally show off this fairy that I said I want to show off. Guys, tell me. Does this look like a fairy? It looks like a Lediba. I honestly don't see anything else. And I played Pokemon Silver and Gold before this, so honestly, I said that from the very get-go of playing Oracle of Ages and Seasons, where the sprite isn't exactly changed at all. It's just given a slightly redder tint. And I've always seen that. I've always seen Lediba or Ledian. I have never in my life seen anything other than that. 
Anyway, this is a orb thing. I honestly have no idea what the enemy name is. It honestly just sucks you towards it. One thing I believe you can do, though, is if you sacrifice yourself... Ugh. Actually, I didn't even have to sacrifice myself. Solid. At last, you got the map. I haven't even gotten the compass first. Wow. Good one, Ross. Let's hear another one. What have we got in here? Ooh. Interesting. Still haven't gotten the item in this dungeon. I should probably have gotten that by now. I should probably have gotten rid of this magic acorn by now, too. Uh, there we go. Fairy God, Peter. And... Let's kill these ghosts. Oh shit, that doesn't work, does it? Yeah, we have to throw in the lights to kill the ghosts. Screw up, ghosts. Click. Oh god. Uh -huh. Easy peasy. Please tell me you just gave me... Yes, indeed. There you are. You found the power bracelet. At last, you can pick up pops and stones. Yep, they knew it was annoying, didn't they? With this, you can basically pick up anything except the wall, because then Link falls in his face. But only in Oracle of Seasons. In this game, he doesn't know when to quit. He'll just pull it for the rest of your day. Yep. Let me get a sip of Coke, because, like I said, I still got Coke. Hmm. Good deal. Yeah, I kind of wish they made the power music a little less annoying, but whatever. And with this, you basically can literally just pick up pots. Pretty solid, isn't it? Another cool thing about the piece of power, it increases the speed at which you can pick this shit up, so... Pretty cool. Ain't it? Yeah! Gotcha. And that puzzle was easy enough. The cool thing about these blocks is there's almost always a different way of doing things. Like, you don't ever have to do everything exactly the way you think you have to. Like, you can hit this and continue forward, but there's always, like, a different way to do things. Like, later on when you get sword beams, or later when you get arrows, like, there's always a different way of doing things in this game, which I do like. Alright, get in the hole. Good deal. And over here... Aha! But... Anime reference, once again, with Sonic. They've been making a lot of anime references with TV nowadays. Honestly, maybe it's become more popular, and that's why. Hmm. I think someone did just open the door this time. I don't know. I cannot tell you for certain. Yeah, I don't think anyone did. Anyway, these are Paul's voice. Which... Do I even have the means to kill him? Oh yeah, I do. You can just pick up a... Wow, this looks pretty heavy. I know, I know. Good, good deal. Give me that. Anyway, so the Pulse Voice are a very classic enemy. Uh, they used to be killed with sound, which you can't really... Actually, no, you can use that in this game. But honestly, the way to kill them is to pick up a pot and throw it at them. Easy peasy. One thing I never understood, why were Pulse Voices never added to the 3D Zelda games? Was there any reason they were never added? Bam! Easy peasy. Please stop saying that. That's not supposed to become a catchphrase. Let's just find some fairies. Ah, hey, look at that. I'll also lift the rest of these just in case there's something else underneath of it, like a secret seashell, which I don't believe can appear inside these dungeons, so I'm just wasting your and my time. Yeah, I'm not sure why the Bulls voice never appeared in, like, the 3D Zelda games. Like, they would have been prime time for Ocarina of Time with the whole, like, Ocarina feature. Could have killed him with it. It would have made perfect sense, but... They never did. It's weird. Anyway, looks like we can't get up there, so let's see what we got over here. Ah, right. So the problem with this one is you can't weight it down yourself. You have to sit on it with a pot, otherwise you cannot lower it. See? Like, watch. Nope, won't lower. Only with the pot will it lower. Cool little puzzle. Uh, oh shit, I need the boss key. Well... Yeah, I kind of had a feeling there was a lot left to explore. Oh, right. Uh, the name of this cave uh, was the the Pot Dungeon. And if you look, it's a pot. Yep. Funny little joke that the game adds. Hey, there we go. But why is Lois blonde? She's not supposed to be blonde. Whatever. Get out of the way. Okay, so yeah, we have a lot left to explore, don't we? Oh, right. Shit, I forgot all about this part. For this part, you basically have to kill the enemies in a specific order. First, the skull. Then the poles voice, I believe. Which I honestly have no way of killing. Do I? 
Unless there was a pot in this room? Oh yeah, there were pots in this room, which I accidentally just threw out and didn't even bother to use. Click. Gotcha, and now kill the bat. That was not the order. Okay. Let's try it in a, a different order. Climb back down, climb back... Ooh, piranha plant. Alright, so let's try the bat first. Maybe the skulls last. Bat... Uh, Pole's voice. I know the Pole's voice goes second. So, pull you up. Damn it, killed him. Well, I might as well try and see if the Pole's voice is last. Nope, he definitely isn't. Let's bore with feeling. Yeah, I know, I could just read the Owl statue, which appears later on in this dungeon, and figure out what I have to kill first and what I have to kill last and all that. Oh, God. Let's get out of the way. <laughs> I actually pushed him. I didn't know you could do that. Oh god, this is so bad. Uh, get out of the way. Now kill this guy. No, that actually wasn't the order either. Huh. Screw it, I'm gonna figure out the order. I'm pretty sure I would've gotten it on my next try had I just done it that way. But whatever. I don't care that much. Jump. Click. Gimme. I probably should've just jumped from up there. Oh no, it didn't matter. Ooh, almost jumped on you. Yeah, they don't use the piranha plant too much in this game. Oh, gotcha. Well, because he sucks in Zelda games. I mean, he's very devastating in the original Mario games because they were so annoying to kill. But in this game, they're not that bad at all. So, yeah. Anyway, we're having to go in this dungeon yet. Oh, that's the wrong map. Well, I haven't gone that way, except that way's not going to lead to anything. Eh, might as well try. Let's see what's over here. Isn't this where the... Oh, yeah, this is where the boss is. Solid. Let's just go this way, then. And actually, we can get this chest now. I believe this is going to be 50 rupees. Yep, called it. Not sure how, but I called it. Anyway, stop using that map. Well, here's a room I never went into. This is probably going to lead to, like, a compass or something like that. I know where the boss key is. The boss key is from that room I was just, like, screwing about in trying to get the three enemies killed in the, uh, the specific order. I don't like saying SP words. They they're annoying. There's not too many of them, and my New Jersey accent doesn't allow it. Stop living shit in your New Jersey accent. Ow! Okay, got him. And what do we got in here? Probably the compass. Oh no, the owl beak. Or the stone beak, whatever. Not bad. I believe if you light up this room, you might get something. Probably not. Nothing at all. Okay, thanks for nothing, game. Thanks. Ooh, close one. Yep. I really don't like those wall traps. They're, they're rather annoying. All right, I have to let this room. Damn it. Oh well. Deal with it. We're gonna get a refill later on anyway. Actually, I could just go now, except... How do I get into that room? Hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. Is there any way to get in that room? That must be a different floor or something. Unless the game doesn't tell you in this version how you get into those other rooms. But there is a ton of pots on this side, so perhaps I could lift them and see if there's a bomb little crack in the wall. Which I don't have bombs yet, so it wouldn't matter, but I might as well check. No. I guess not. Aw, oh, goddammit, I have to light this room up again. Sorry about this, guys. Wasting your time and all. Okay. Grab you. And are you? I didn't even need to do that. Man, I'm being very tame in this episode. I'm not yelling at all. Not really swearing or anything. I guess I'm in the Christmas spirit, you know? Why not have an episode or two where you're just not swearing that much? And am I seriously out of keys? Man, I had like a million keys. How am I already out? Well, that's the way the key crumbles. The key key crumb. Shut up. Anyway. So that must be how I get into that room, obviously. I have to unlock it. So I guess the game doesn't tell you. Pun, Oracle of Ages, and at least I know in Oracle of Ages, it does tell you. Alright, so for this puzzle, what you actually have to do is slice them from this side. And slice them from this side, you do that. Bing! 